I'm visiting the baking capitals of the world. Bellissimo. In search of the people, <laughs> the places, and the traditions that make the very best of baking. Oh. From the laid back sunshine vibe of Miami to the European chic of Paris. I'm on my global tour of baking, and today I'm here to sample the delights of Madrid. This time on City Bakes, I'm put through my paces making a local delicacy. It's like driving a bus that's burst all its tires. I discover the secret of puff pastry the Madrid way. Look at the layers. And I create a city bake that you can bake at home. I'm going to need this recipe, let me tell you. <laughs> the British love Spain. Every year, over 12 million of us hit the beaches here in search of the sun. Hello. Hello. And judging by my welcome, Thanks. Thanks so much. I'm going. I've seen you on the telly. It looks like Madrid is a popular city destination too. Cheers, Paul. But believe it or not, I've never been here before, so I'm looking forward to exploring this beautiful city. I love this. Look at that. That is beautiful. The Roman church in the background, the beautiful buildings going all the way down, the perspective that lines up. Yeah, I, could, I could sit, having went to art school, I could sit here and paint that all day. That's exceptional. Madrid is one of Europe's sunniest capitals. And when you live in a climate like this, it's no surprise that eating and drinking outdoors becomes a way of life. You see tables and chairs all over the place, people eating outside, enjoying the outdoor life. And that's what it's all about, really, for me. There wasn't much of this cafe culture where I grew up in Liverpool. I could definitely get used to this, but I don't know much about Madrid's baking culture. When you think of Spanish cooking and Spanish food, you think of tapas, you think sangria, you think chorizo, you think paella. But I'm digging around to find out a little bit more about what makes Spanish, and more in particular, Madrid, tick in the baking world. Luckily, I know just the person. My old buddy, Omar Alaboy, is the owner of a UK chain of tapas restaurants. Hi there, buddy. Oh, hi. But has spent most of his life in Madrid. This is the, uh, the place that I used to come with my mum time and time again. I've probably tried every single pastry a million times. Omar's brought me to El Rio Hanna, which was established in 1855 by the pastry chef to the Spanish queen. The counter is rammed full of delicious looking pastries, biscuits, and cakes. Nos puedes dar a probar, por favor. He's gonna give us a little taste. No wonder Omar spent so much time here when he was a lad. I think I would have done the same. From cream filled buñuelos, a sort of mini donut. That's beautiful. To rows of sweet biscuits. Wow, nuts coming through. That's sweetness from a caramel as well. Many of these are made with lard instead of butter. Beautiful. <laughs> That's a dunker as well. Yes. All right, now it's like six dunks and a cup of coffee, that one. These bakes are so full of flavor. No, it tastes good. <laughs> My first taste of Madrid baking is turning into one treat after another. Wow. I love that. I'm going to have to take some of these, eh? I know I am. <laughs> Religion plays an important part in Spanish baking. In fact, most of these bakes are made to celebrate religious festivals of one sort or another. It is religion, again, dominating baking again. So certain times of year they produce something to celebrate Always. a saint or a, a season. Always. And the nuns in the convents, still, uh, they do the best biscuits, the best pastries in the country. I just picture nuns sitting there, actually, I mean, in black, covered in flour. <laughs> I'm producing biscuits and my yeah. <laughs> For me, tasting the pastries and the biscuits have been amazing. What I did find fascinating, though, was the 
the religious connotations in the baking, the way that seasonally certain things are baked at certain times of the year. But then when you look at the variety in there, you know you're in a very special place. Gracias. Hasta luego. Something I love almost as much as baking is biking. This is the perfect way to see Madrid. It's a beautiful city with a stylish mix of the old and the new. I could spend all day taking in the sights, but I'm here to learn about the bakes. So Omar is taking me to another historic bakery with a reputation for a very special religious cake. Tucked away in these narrow back streets is the oldest pastry shop in Madrid, Pastelaria del Pozo. I love the look of the shop. This is like a kid's toy shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I think when you look at it, for me, it's about, it's about the colour. You know, sometimes you go to bakeries and they're quite pale. This has got lots of colour. It's got that old school feel. Yeah, look at the me... cashier, how old it is. That's probably wow. over 100 years, I'm guessing. Right, let's get in. I'm down to try some of this stuff. Looks good. Hola. Hola. ¿Qué tal? Muy bien. Fantastic looking place. The bakes that you have in there, I mean, they look beautiful. Thank you. What, what are you famous for? Puff pastry and roscón. Roscón de Reyes, which means king's ring, is a religious bake typically eaten after Christmas to celebrate the arrival of the three wise men. The orange blossom in there as well. Yeah. Yes. And lemon. A Spanish and lemon. orange blossom. Mmm. Mm, it's been a long time. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Spectacular. It is a cross between a cake and a bread. And it is. Yeah. Yes. You make literally a bread dough and a cake dough combined. So a sponge gets mixed with a fermented dough? Correct. Takes time to make this. It tastes amazing. The whole place for me is just magical. I love going into places like this. And you can really taste the atmosphere as soon as you walk in. This bakery has a reputation for its puff pastry. And there's something else in the window that has caught my eye. An empanada is a stuffed pastry which dates from medieval times, when the Spanish took their inspiration from the Indian samosa. Look at the layers there. See all those beautiful layers and the filling? And so thin as well. That's done with the lard and... Absolutely. And even though that lard. is lard and no butter, it, it still looks really golden and yellow, and you would think that lard will make it whiter, but it doesn't. Mm. How delicate is that? Wow. Wow. That's delicious. I mean, really good. That's sensational. Better than pizza. Mm. <laughs> Oh, it's a shame I don't live down the road. <laughs> if I lived here, I'd be bigger than I am. It's <laughs> ridiculous. That is very special. Yeah. I've tried a lot of puff pastry in my time, but one made with lard, really? But when you eat it, you feel almost each layer as you bite into it with your teeth, and then it just melts on your tongue. I've got to see how they make this. Hola. Hola. Ah, banana. Angel has been working at Potho for an incredible 45 years. No wonder he's learned a thing or two about making puff pastry. So what he's actually doing is putting the lard on, which I've never actually seen before. Now, it's this melted lard. It's warm, so it's liquids, which is going on top of the pastry. Now, this is on... It's cold. It's very cold. Está frío, sí. When I make puff pastry, I keep the pastry cold by putting it in a fridge. But Angel uses a tray of ice. So he's chilling it down, brushing it on while it's hot, leaving it to set, and then he's going to fold it. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I'd hardly believe it. And just to prove it's true, Angel's got the evidence. Ah, there's the fat. The this, is, this is the lard. I mean, look at it. It feels like... It feels like... Uh, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's, it's proper lard. Angel rolls and folds his lard-filled pastry to create those all-important layers. The more layers that you put into this, the more it puffs up in the oven. It's got no rising agents in it at all. And the flavour, kid you not, is spectacular. Look at that. Look at the layers. With lard. 
I've actually learned something. I never knew that you could produce the layers almost like a proper puff pastry, but just made with lard. It's incredible. Gracias, chef. Del Pozo has been in business for over 180 years, and now I know why. Simply delicious. I've tried a lot of bakes in my time, and what I've learned today and there, I am going to take that with me for the rest of my life. I'm now beginning to understand what Madrid baking is all about. Coming up, I sample Madrid's supersized baking tradition. Look at the size of the churros. That seems like that. And I take inspiration from the local baking culture with my own city bake. It's terrific. Well done, it does taste the Spain. I'm in Madrid, discovering the best of Spanish baking. I don't like it. I love it. And enjoying the sights and sounds of the city. What a place to live. It's my first visit to Madrid, but I feel very at home here. I love parts of the city that are like this. I particularly love. It's the, it's the way the buildings are almost on top of each other. Very characteristic of cities around Europe, where it almost joins together. And then the architecture, you look around, the balconies are pretty, the colours are amazing. And what seems to be all over the place in Madrid are these tiles, these painted tiles, which I think are gorgeous. I mean, I'd have that in my loo, if I'm honest. But then you look at this, again, the same here, you've got these beautiful pictures. It's very artistic, but then it's you really feel that you've stepped back two, three hundred years. I love cities like that. The feel of the, the road, cobbles, lots of people. And to be honest, everyone I've met in Madrid have been fantastic, really friendly. Want to show you the city and they're very proud of the city. It's beautiful. The Spaniards have a reputation for staying up later than everyone else. They've even given the early hours of the morning its own name, La Madrugada. And Madrid has a favourite pastry dish to eat after a night out. It's called Chocolata con Churros. Omar's actually recommended this place. This is called San Ginés, and apparently it's the best chocolate in Madrid. And I love chocolate. OK, there's a bit of a queue. This is a popular place, and it's a pretty spot too. When you look around, I mean, the settings, I mean, look at look over here. Look at that. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Beautiful old building. You really feel you're in this. I'm losing my place. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, uh, it's just buzzing. And everyone's really excited about getting chocolate. It's like the massive Willy Wonka factory. The chocolate is served piping hot with the churros, which is a deep-fried dough, a bit like chew pastry. The smell of chocolate is intoxicated. Look at the size of the churros. Massive, it's like that. Nice. Gracias. Look at these fellas. They're perfect. Wow. The smell, the smell is fantastic. I'm just going to have a quick taste of it on its own. Quite salty. And the texture is quite open inside, so it's quite an open texture, but it melts in the mouth. It's not a bad flavour just on its own. That chocolate is something else. <laughs> It's spectacular. The silkiest, smoothest chocolate that you've ever had. And that's all these guys selling here. And it's absolutely rammed and it's queues about a mile down the road. That's spectacular. I've just got to know how they make this now. Us bakers are an understanding bunch, so I'm sure they won't mind me having a nose behind the scenes. Hola. 
In the kitchens, I find the bakers pounding a simple mixture of salt, water and flour, and that's it. No butter and no eggs. For plenty of elbow grease. It's a strange mix. It's very, very hard. It is like a hot water crust pastry. Very difficult to work with. OK, he's putting on the, the piper now. Mixing the dough suddenly feels like the easy bit. <laughs> that looks difficult. If I'm honest, that looks really difficult. Jeez. Wow. OK. <laughs> this isn't like any piping bag I've ever used before. It's really weird. It's really weird. Yeah, I think it's a good pattern, this one. I think I've invented something here. It's like driving a bus that's bursting all its tires. Thank <laughs> I mean, that's what the mints look like. Beautiful concentric circles going in. I think mine's a new one, to be honest. Um, I think it's probably going to sell quite well. The dough was certainly mixed to perfection. From the sublime to the ridiculous. Yeah. I like to call it puzzlement. <laughs> I'm more used to being the judge, but now it's my turn to be judged. That's good, huh? <laughs> no offence taken, but never mind how it looks. How does it taste? It tastes beautiful. I don't know what he's talking about. He doesn't have a clue. It's beautiful. Try it. Try it. Might not look good, but it tastes amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna have some more. I've loved my visit to San Ginés. The chocolate is delicious, and I'm happy to leave the churros to the experts. But before I leave this wonderful city, I want to mark my visit with a bake of my own. I've got a recipe in mind, but I'm gonna need some ingredients. Now, this is the place I've come to find. This is. San Miguel Market. It was refurbed totally in 2009. One of the oldest iron markets still left in Madrid. And apparently, the food in here is fantastic. This place is full of the best of Spanish produce, all of which you can enjoy as tapas at one of the counter bars, which seem to be doing a roaring trade. It feels alive, this place, full of food. The smells as well, you can smell the ham. I can smell frying as well. Great looking pastry there. Believe me, I could eat my way around this place no problem, but I'm here to find the ingredients for my city bake, which I've decided is going to be my own twist on an empanada. First on my list is cheese. Well, I mean, when I think of queso, I mean, the cheese here is beautiful. Manchega I've used a lot in bread and pastries and it's delicious. <laughs> this looks stunning. I love manchego. It's a buttery cheese named after the manchego sheep that graze La Mancha, an elevated plateau south of Madrid. Aged for a full two years, this cheese will be rich in flavor. Manchego. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Next on my shopping list is ham, and I've come to the right place. Spain is the home of Hamon Iberico, from the free-range pigs that roam Spain's oak forests and are fed on acorns and grain. I mean, look at this ham. It's just stunning. This is what Iberico ham is all about. Also known as pata negra, this meat is matured for up to three years and is some of the best I've ever eaten. That's delicious. That is going in my empanada. It's going to taste amazing. There's so many local delicacies to tempt shoppers here. I love it. And you might have noticed that I'm a soft touch when it comes to tasty treats. I think I've broken a two. Delicious, though. Filled with mouth-watering flavors and aromas, the Mikado has a really great atmosphere. It's the ideal setting for me to do my bake. I'm going to make my interpretation of an empanada. Now, I've got Omar here, and I hope he likes it. The flavours that I've chosen have been influenced from what I've seen, actually, over the last few days. The pastry 
is loosely based on the technique and the empanadas we saw in Povi, Povo. El Pozo's Pastelería. That place. <laughs> now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a pastry. It's like a rough puff pastry. My base dough is made with plain flour, salt and water. Normally, I'd just use butter to layer the dough. But just as they did at Del Pozo, this time I'm adding the best quality pork lard. Now I'm going to fold that over and again put the rest of the lard on. Now what is it about this lard that makes it so good? Well, Iberico pigs, they are a different breed that roam freely, and as you know, most of the flavor in meat is in the fat, and that's why Iberico ham is that good. Hence, the lard is that good, and it gives so much character and so much flavor to the pastry itself. I mean, the flavor that we had in the empanada in the bakery was just stunning. Yeah. I mean, that's why I've used it in this. I fold and roll the dough three times, then I'm ready to add the filling. I've got some spinach here, which I'm just gonna lay in the middle. Would you mind cutting up some of those peppers? Yes, absolutely. Now, I've bought some manchego. The actual cheese itself is so potent, it's full of flavor. It's just incredible. On goes that melt in the mouth of Berico ham. Now, that's basically it. Get your lid and just fold it over the top. Get your egg wash, loads of that on there. Now, you know where the oven is, don't you? Yes. I'll leave that with you. Brilliant. You can take that for me. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. 180, 20 minutes? I would say 200. 15, 20 minutes. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. The whole thing about empanadas now is the bake. What we're looking for is that layers, the rise, the puff up, so that as the fat melts, it pushes steam up between those very thin layers that we've achieved. I just hope he likes it. My Madrid-inspired empanadas certainly look the part. The Iberico lard in the pastry has really worked. Let me cut a, a little bite. Oh, look Flaky. at that crumble. We get the How great, flake great flake in there. Pack full of flavor. I'm gonna need this recipe, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> These empanadas really are so simple and easy, but the Iberica lard has really lifted them. Like the pastries I've tasted in Madrid, they're crunchy and rich, but still light. Well done, it does taste of Spain. <laughs> You know the bacon in Paris is good. We all know that. Same in Germany, same in Italy, same in Greece. But I knew nothing of Madrid. They're really enthusiastic and celebrate their food. The baking here is some of the best I've ever seen. And I will definitely be coming back. And hopefully, so will you.